Hey VC, this is Whack-A-Mole number 40. It's like jazz hands or a tribute to Bob uh, Bradley on the uh, YouTube channel. Boo, boop, boop, boop. I can't do the stuff he does. And this is a rabbits, rabbits, rabbits edition or rabbit, rabbit, rabbit edition, singular or plural. plural. If you don't know that, I'm, I'm not very superstitious except for rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. This is being uh, filmed or videotaped or however you want to call it, uh, produced on November 1st, 2019. So the um, good luck charm is the first thing you say at the beginning of every month. And I actually say it. I've been saying this for like 30 years almost, unless I forget. It's just like a habit. If you look at your clock or you look at your calendar and it's the first, November 1st in this case, the first thing you say after midnight or in the morning when you wake up before you say anything else is rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Good luck. Turn of the century, 20th century folklore. I think it was from a children's book originally and it sort of grew. grew. It could be a, from a British, you, uh, it could be a British thing, a British story novelist. Um, children's book writer. I don't know, but rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. Look it up, Google it, figure it out. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Okay, I pick uh, five random records, showcase them, talk about them. Let's have it. One. Two. Three, four, five, five. Uh, my favorite band from the Southwest, Calexico, Calexico. Um, Actually, one of their, my favorite albums of this year is uh, the second collaboration Calexico did with Iron and Wine. Really wonderful record. Uh, they have a series of records. Their, their sound is a little bit, I don't want to say country rock because it's, it's got the uh, indie country, alt country flavor, but it's almost like spaghetti westerns at times. Very moving, very cinematic, very uh, spaghetti western at times as well. Um, this is, what is this one called? Uh, oh, Hot Rail. Is this Hot Rail? Yeah, this is Hot Rail. And this came out, God, when did this one come out? See, I'm asking, I keep asking myself, I'm repeating, 2000, I believe. 2000, look at that beautiful artwork. And I should, uh, I'll be remiss. It's basically uh, John Convertino and Joey Burns are the two main guys. And then they have other musicians that they bring on. I've seen them with, um, uh, this wonderful German trumpet player that has sort of the Mexicali sound to it. There's a great, great video I have. I think it's live in Berlin, as I, I think it's in Berlin, with almost like a full orchestra, and it's, and it's gorgeous. So check that out. Um, the artwork is by um, Victor Gastium. 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 I'm, sorry, I'm probably butchering that name, but um, beautiful, uh, beautiful artwork on their records. So, great record, Hot Rail. I have all the Calexico records or one of my, they're a top Mazzy fave, Calexico. <laughs> Another, seriously, all-time favorite record um, and my favorite album of Phil Oaks is Pleasures for the Harbor. Is this, I have a mono copy that's pretty rare. Is this it, is this the mono copy? I have a mono in stereo. I've been looking for a mono copy of this for years and I found it about three years ago. Yeah, this is my mono copy on the old A&M. Came 1968, beautiful, beautiful record. Gorgeous. Uh, the piano playing on this record by Lincoln Mallorca is just stunning. Uh, contemporary of Bob Dylan, he started out really into the protest thing, uh, protest singers, uh, I Ain't March Anymore, his earlier stuff. Uh, he was on Electra Records and A&M Records. His earlier stuff is more protesty, uh, but he has this golden voice. So there's always sort of this rivalry between him and Dylan, and the old uh, rumor, which I don't think is a rumor, that once Dylan uh, kicked him out of his limo. Rumor or not, it's a great story. Uh, tragic story too. He hung himself. I think he was 
but barely 40. I don't know all the exact details. At one point, um, I know um, there was going to be considered a movie being made, which would be kind of great. I, you, you never know. I'd like to see a really, really good documentary. I don't know if there is one. I should probably look around, um, but not that I know of. But Sean Penn was a big fan and was considering playing him when Sean was younger. Uh, I'm thinking 20, 25 years ago, doing a Phil Oaks uh, biopic. Would have been a good, who knows. Uh, but, but Cross My Heart, Flower Lady, Miranda the Party, Players of the Harbor. A lot of long songs, very epic, very beautiful. But again, the piano player and the lush orchestration. And, and it just, this is a magic record in my life. A magic record for me, Pleasures of the Harbor. Uh, it goes beyond uh, folk music. He's a folk artist, and this goes beyond that. It's probably one of the best records of 1968, um, in my opinion. And um, But it's very lush, and that's why I think at the time that wasn't really what was happening in 1968. Things were going a little different, as you know. But I recommend this. Um, you know, Bill, Dylan had the shittier voice, but, um, and made it, and he had the, the beautiful voice. Uh, his brother founded the Michael Oakes Archive, which is a photography archive. I think it was probably 10 years ago or so, probably sold to Getty, who owns all the stock photography in the world. But the Michael Oakes Archive had, um, you see that in a lot of records, God, from the uh, 80s, 90s, and beyond of uh, rock and roll photography. Somehow he got all the licenses or of uh, photography promo and label photography of mu musicians. Ooh, okay. Um, the Lemon Twigs. I did a video on their last album. Their newest album that came out this year is really interesting, but almost overkill. It's a double, almost like a little rock opera about high school in a way. This is called Do Hollywood. And this is the one that I bought. They opened up, um, I saw them at a little club in Seattle about three years ago. When did this album come out? It's on 4AD, 2016. So three years ago, they opened up at a little club for Sunflower Bean, a, tr a trio quartet, depending on, uh, I think now they're a quartet, but who are really kind of great pop, uh, modern rock, uh, young band that are really, really good. Um, but they opened up and I was blown away. The two brothers in the band, they're from Long Island, I believe, and the two brothers are fucking amazing. They're a combination. They sound like a mix of Todd Rundgren, who's actually on the last album. Todd Rundgren, Wings, Klaatu, very 70s pop, thematic, amazing over-the-top uh, arrangements. In a way, very intricate, but very almost like sweet. And uh, Eric Carmen and the Raspberries, Raspberries, and if you like that, if you like this, this is the album to get out of all of them so far. And they're they're just barely, I think they're 21 now, maybe, if that, 22, I don't know, who knows. Uh, amazing, amazing. They play multi-instruments, uh, great harmonies, but intricate stuff. So if you like that really schmaltzy 70s wings and Raspberries and Eric Carmen and Sweet uh, and Clap 2, uh, you'll love these guys, so. It's called Do Hollywood, and it's on 4 AD. Porter Wagner. Porter Wagner, a uh, country artist. He's the one that really kind of uh, discovered and made Dolly Parton famous. He had a TV show in the 60s, and Dolly Parton was a regular on it. Uh, great country singer with a great uh, pompadour. <laughs> Look at that haircut. That blonde haircut. He made the most bizarre and funny covered records of, of alcoholism and infidelity and country music songs about it. I mean, who knows if his life was like that, but amazing stuff. Um, this one, Highway Heading South, you know, I don't even know this one as much, but um, great songwriter. In fact, this is like, it looks like uh, Life Rides a Train on here, Frida Dolly Parton song. There's one, at least one Dolly Parton song. He writes it all. Great songwriter. Uh, he, Porter Wagner made a, a several series of albums with Dolly Parton, too. Every time I see a Porter Wagner album or a Do Dolly Parton album, I grab them. Um, 
You gotta see WX. Sorry. I just want to show you because these covers are pretty great. Well, obviously, we're doing a little side side show for uh, Whack a Mole. Porter Wagner, Dolly Parton, just the two of us. Great harmonies, great country, kind of old school country. <laughs> and Dolly burn, burning the midnight oil. The bottle, the bottle. You know, tonight the bottle let me down. Uh, that song was covered by a great version by Amy Lou Harris. So look at that. I mean, his sort of campy 60s record covers about um, drinking, drinking and wino and swinging doors and a lot of, a lot of stuff about wine, <laughs> being a wino. I mean, you can't get much better than this cover. Look at that. We're talking about Down and Out, Confessions of a Broken Man. The rummy sitting, the drunken rummy sitting. I mean, it's kind of sad now with what's going on in America um, in terms of homelessness and things. But um, a powerful, emotional series of songs. God, these are, gr these are great songs. Uh, depressing, but uplifting at the same time, if that makes any sense. Now, okay, this is the best cover of all. And this song... The Cold Hard Facts of Life. Look at this cover. Okay. The song, The Cold Hard Facts of Life. Let me just, I'm going to tell you the story, but you got to listen to the song. Find it. I'll link it below. The man is driving home. He's been on the road, work. He gets... He stops off at a liquor store to pick up a bottle to bring to his wife because he hasn't seen his wife in a while. And uh, he goes into a liquor store and he's waiting in line to buy the bottle of wine. And uh, while he's in the bottle of wine, there's a guy in front of him that's checking out and buying a, a, a six pack or a bottle of liquor or whatever he's buying and says to the, uh, the guy behind the counter, yeah, or I want this great bottle because uh, I'm seeing this woman, his, his, her husband's out of town. And we're going to have a party, you know, that type of thing. And so uh, the pro protagonist buys his bottle, gets in his car, drives, and he just ends up being behind the guy who uh, bought the bottle in front of him and follows him, not on purpose, but just driving the same way. He realizes they're going the same way. Then the other guy pulls in his driveway. So you know what the rest of the story is, and it's sort of a tragic ending. <laughs> to the story, the cold hard facts of life. I hope you understood the way I described that story, but it's a great, it's a great country song. Oh, and he walks in on him, of course, you know. And a country song, all that in three minutes. Um, and then, of course, another early Porter Wagner. This isn't an, an import. This is a, a UK BMG RCA import. Look at that illustration, great stuff. So, Porter Wagner... I don't know who that is. It's not Dolly Parton playing that banjo. The bluegrass story. Anyway, important figure in the whole country thing. I haven't watched the Ken Burns country thing yet, but I assume they mentioned Porter Wagner. If they don't, that would be criminal. All right. And lastly, well, lastly, a record you all know. Da -da 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 -da. Led Zeppelin 2. I can't say anything about this. I have two versions. I have a classic LP version. I think this is the classic version. Is this the classic version? Oh, this is an amazing version. I don't have a Robert Ludwig cut, but this is classic records version, which is amazing sounding record. I guess I need to get the hot press cut, the hot stamper Ludwig cut at some point. Maybe, but do I need it? This is wonderful. And as much as I play it now, I mean, I love the record, but you all know Led Zeppelin too. I don't need to say anything more. So that's uh, the 40th edition of Mazzy's Whack-A-Mole. Thanks again for watching. Um, have a great weekend. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Mazzy loves you.